Hey, buddy, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Hope you guys are keeping cool, man. It is kind of warm out here in Illinois. I mean, like 97 degrees. Yesterday, uh, temperature got up to 99 degrees. Didn't quite hit 100, but it did get hot outside, and it's very humid, and it's supposed to be that way for a few days out here. But anyways... Today I'm working on the Ibanez and I want to work on the fretboard. And the reason why I'm working on the fretboard first before I do any type of wood stripping, stripping or anything else is because I want to get rid of any type of uh, filing material that I'll get from the frets like any type of sanding dust or, or you know, if I have to do any type of a filing, like the fret ends on this are pretty damn nice, so I really don't have to do too much with them. But in case I have to do anything with files, sandpaper or whatnot, it's going to make some type of a metal dust. And that metal dust is very dirty, all right? Now, if this neck was stripped, and even with this neck being coated right now with something, it will end up getting some of that dust on it. And I am going to have to polish it off, not sand it out, but polish it off and the reason why it gets in there is because it kind of gets into the little bitty open pores or whatever that's in the finish as well as in raw wood so it will stain this i want to take care of it now before i do any finishing of the body or the guitar and make sure there's nothing on the neck itself and it looks like it's brand new kind of like it does now so taking care of this is a little bit of an important thing right now I want to see how straight the neck is. Looking down the neck, I did the other day when I was uh, taking this thing apart, and it looked pretty straight. I mean, there was no bow in it that I could see, but unless I put a straight edge on here, I'm really not going to know for sure. And right now, she is pretty straight with a little minor bow in the center of it. So let me see if I can get that out. See if I turn it this way, it's gonna give me more of a bow, right? No, it actually flattened itself out, and I got a little bit of tiny back bow. So let me turn this just a little bit. Still got a minor back bow in it. I think I take taking care of that problem right there and the middle is flat as well so the neck is straight perfectly straight how do I know because this is perfectly straight so now I want to take my rocker now one thing that I've noticed about these rockers and if you guys have ever done this at home as well you might notice a difference too. take the rocker and put it in on an angle a little bit and for some reason, I'll get like a false reading if it's on an angle. If it's straight up, nice and flat, I get a better reading. So right here, I'm noticing that this fret right here, where's my marker, is up a little bit. And it's on that side. A little bit of a rocking there. It's good. This middle one, it feels like the whole thing is up high. This middle one right here, it seems like this side is high. The middle is up high. The ends are a little high. That one feels pretty good. The ends are a little high. This side's a little high. Here, am I still in the picture? Nope, I'm out of the picture. This middle.
All right, so I marked the frets that need a little bit of an attention to them. And I'm gonna take and do something here. Instead of going over this and doing a complete fret leveling, which it may not even need it. A few taps of the hammer. Mallet, whatever you wanna call it. So this side here is high, so I'll put my finger on this side, putting pressure on it, all right? Because if something is wrong and the fret is loose or whatever, and I hit this side, this side may come up. So what I want to do is just tap it a few times. And I don't really have to do anything more with that. So I think I saw this fret move a little bit. No, well, maybe not. Maybe it was just my my eyes. No, nope, I don't feel it moving when I tap on it. Center. Okay. Now this one's thrown off. All right, here's one that is not going down. All right, so I have one fret here. Let's see if I can find it again. Yeah, right here. It's not wanting to go down. And it doesn't look like it is sticking up any at all. And it's not loose. These frets are not loose. They're actually kind of tight. I thought I was feeling it uh, or saw it move, but I guess when I tapped on this side, the whole trick of the eye thing made the fretboard kind of look like it went like this but it actually looked like it was the fret that was doing it and all the edges of the frets are blending into each other I really don't see this fret over here being higher but 
you can hear it in the middle there's rocking them. Yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna need a little bit of a leveling. So I will have to level these frets. They don't look like they've been leveled before. And there is a little bit of wear. There's a little bit of wear on this one here. Uh, let's see, that one's okay. That one's all right. There's a little bit of wear here. Maybe that's the problem too, is I might be getting into the wear side. So yeah, these guys are gonna have some work done to them. All right, just made my job a little bit more harder. All right, so I checked online and I checked with my radius gauge and some of these were a 15.75 inch radius, some of these were a 16, and some of these were a 14 inch radius. So I checked mine out with my gauge and it comes out to be a 14 inch radius on this, which I'm surprised that they vary so much and I don't know why they vary so much, but they do. And it's a little bit confusing, so you gotta make sure that you know you have the right block for doing this now I like to use radius blocks because there's like dummy proof I have a beam uh, and I've used them they work out pretty good but I think the blocks work a lot better so that's what I'm going to use right now making sure that the fretboard is straight because once you have it masked off you cannot recheck to see if the fretboard is straight the thickness of the tape will throw you off because in some areas you have overlapping tape in some areas you don't so you can see how colorful mine is because I have different size tape on here so I'm going to go ahead and black magic marker the tops of these and that's basically a reference to see what's being cut, how it's being cut, and how much is not being cut on other frets that are maybe too low. All right, keeping my rocker on hand, and now I'm gonna go over this and see what I've got as far as what's cutting and what's not cutting. I've got a 14 inch Stumac radius block, and here we go. All right, so they are pretty much barely see the line over here on these guys here so I'm stopping there I'm not going any further and that's using 220 grit sandpaper so now I'm gonna go to the next step and that is crowning these guys so my crowning method is a little bit different than what you've seen in the past of me doing now I bought this little block here it has these rounded pieces of metal underneath them and what you do is you take this foam sandpaper, it's a foam pad, wrap it around the block, just like this, and those humps here and here, right over the fret, and rounds off the fret, crowning them at the same time as polishing them. Then I'll go ahead and go over it with a 600 grit. Then I'll go over it with a 1000 grit pad. Then I'll go over it with a 2000 grit pad. Now after using that, I'll go over it with the fret erasers now. With the front erasers, you have a 180 grit, 400 grit, and a 1000 grit. So the problem is, is I know that the blue is a 1000 grit, but what's the rest of them? So if I feel it like this, all right, that's kind of smooth. So this is the 180. And what this does is help remove any other scratches from sandpapers. And I'll go over with the 400. And last but not least, the 1000. Alright, so now I'm ready for polishing the frets, even though they really don't need it, but I like to go that extra step. <coughs> now, Although the 220 grit sandpaper that I have on the sanding block itself does cut the frets, all right, 
when you look at a 400, a 600, a 1000, and a 2000, actually they go in this order, sorry, when you look at 400, 600, 1000, and 2000, these are polishing sandpapers, okay? Even the wet sanding, as far as a 400, 800, or 400, 600, 800, uh, 1500, 1000, 2000, 25, those are all polishing sandpapers, okay? Now, a 400 grit sandpaper is going to give you enough cut to where paint will stick to it if you're sanding paint. But if you're sanding metal, it's not really cutting, it's more polishing. So putting it on this here with these rollers or whatever you want to call these here, and then going over it, what it's doing is every time it hits a fret, it rolls over the top of it, rolls over the top of it, and so on and so on. And what that is doing with the 400 grit sandpaper, it's not really cutting the fret, more of smoothing it out and rounding it off. So while the 220 cuts, these here are more of a polishing. That's why when you use the fret erasers, you've got a 400 uh, fret eraser, you have a 180, which is under, you know, as far as grit goes, the 220. Um, and then you have a uh, 1000, and that is like the equivalence of the polishing sandpapers, but not in a sandpaper form. And that's how you get these really nice, smooth frets. This tool here. I tell you, this has worked out really, really good for me. Um, I can't buy this anymore, so I kind of like cherish this thing and, and put it away so it's nice and safe. I can't buy it no more. And finding these sandpaper pads is a little bit of a bitch as well. So I get them by a block like this with different grades in them. This is how I polished the Devlin frets. And this is how I polish these. Frets. All right, so this next step here is kind of the, excuse you, vacuum cleaner. This next step here is the actual polishing phase. And some people don't like to do this because they think it heats the frets up too much and will loosen the fret out of its slot. Well, it's not like if you're using a, say, like a, a um, soldering gun or something close to it to where it's getting up to 300 degrees or whatnot. This is not going to give that much friction as far as creating that much heat to loosen these frets up. So what I end up using... Good old mother's uh, mag aluminum polish. The only few times I will use a paper towel. Most of the time I will use microfiber. As you can see, the neck is still pretty much clean as far as what I have protected. And I'll go ahead and put a generous sum on top of the fret. And it's kind of a good idea to, when you do your masking, to tape very, very close to your fretboard because this is where the shit really gets close to your fret when you're polishing it because it's kind of being pushed between the fret and the fretboard between the tape. So this is kind of like very crucial to make sure you do a good job when you're masking things off. And again, this is how I do all my fret jobs. Some people may agree with it, some people may not. But I tell you what, when other people end up playing the guitars that I worked on, I'll tell you, it works out pretty damn well. So let's get into this. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wipe everything down first before I oil the fretboard because I don't want to trap uh, with the oil a lot of the dirt and debris and everything else that is may have gotten under the tape from the edges. I want to trap that on the fretboard because as you see it is a little dirty 
but a lot of that can be from the frets themselves as well polishing off the remainder part of the polish that's on them and this is a microfiber cloth and as you see I end up brushing around the edges of here and it is not sharp at all alright so a little bit of thanks to um, Detroit Wrecker for sending me some of this weed and feed wax or weed and wax or feed and feed and wax. Duh, man. This stuff is, works really, really well and I've gotten used to using it. Instead of using my Dunlop, which I was using before, this stuff is kind of nice. Make sure you shake it in though because it does form a liquid on the top. If you don't shake it, you get nothing but liquid. Just dab a little bit on here, start spreading it in, try to go with the grain up against the fret, let it set. Sometimes you might need a little bit more, see look at that, look how dirty that is. So like I said before with the sandpaper, it's a 400, 8, 400, 600, 800 are for metal, they're like polishing sandpapers because the metal is so hard. For paint or all purpose sanding as far as wood goes and shit like that, it works differently. So if you're trying to do a fret leveling job and you're only using like a 400 grit sandpaper to do a fret leveling job you're not really cutting too much. You're more like polishing the top of the fret. All right, so I'll let that sit for a little bit and come back to wipe it off and then I'll show you guys a nice chrome bumper finish. All right. 57 Chevy bumper it is. Nice, real, real nice. This is the way I like my frets to look on every guitar, and this is how my frets look on every guitar. I don't sheet, I don't uh, cut corners, and I like it to look professional. Now, the reason why you saw me vacuum the area over here is I was picking up any metal shavings from leveling, crowning, polishing, uh, with any type of sandpaper that I was using even the 400 grit to a thousand grit will give you some type of a micro uh, metal but it, you see it in a dust form and if you go to polish your frets with the Dremel the Dremel has a built-in fan to keep the motor cool that's going to blow that dust around it's going to get into the polishing wheel that you're using it's going to get into whatever type of compound that you're using for polishing metal and it's going to scratch the frets the frets are going to get dull look dull and you'll see the micro scratches in the metal in some cases if those metal chips are a little bit bigger it'll actually gouge the metal on your frets and you're going to see scratches because of that even if you do it uh, manually by hand with a rag and some type of a cutting cream or compound you're going to pick up all that dust in the rag and you're just going to be pushing it right back into the metal little frets it's just little details like that, cleaning up around your area, making sure the fretboard is clean, shit like that, that makes it look more of quality work than just trying to half-ass it or cut corners. And I don't like cutting corners. All right, on to bigger and better things. <laughs> 